boxing round is a three-minute increment of time in which intensity, relentlessness, and violence all meet to create moments of greatness. Together, Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez have fought almost 800 career rounds. Some have ended spectacularly. Oh my gosh, what a straight left hook. Some bloodily. A huge uppercut. Down goes Diaz. And that will be that. And for 24 rounds, they have battled each other to an almost even standstill. In May 2004, the rivalry began with a first round that would threaten to end things before they really started. And he fires the straight left hand, and there's the punching bout. Third knockdown of the first round. And I'm not oh. sure Juan Manuel will be able to get up. But Marquez was able and got up in a big way. All right hand stunts back out. And it could be the comeback of a lifetime for Juan Manuel Marquez. At the end of 12 grueling rounds, the result was a draw. Four years later, the rematch took place. Huge left hook, buckles back out. Down goes Marquez on a straight left hand shot. Perfect shot by Pacquiao. Pacquiao trying to search and destroy. Marquez trying to shock him with counter punching aggression. One more right hand for Marquez. One more combination for Pacquiao. They trade shots down the stretch. Pacquiao's narrow split decision win leads us to tonight's epic third confrontation. Twelve more rounds for each man to try again to prove who's better than the other. Manny Pacquiao, Juan Manuel Marquez, next. Versus Marquez is being brought to you by MGM Grand, the city of entertainment in Las Vegas, Cerveza Tecate, Con Caracter, and by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. Every seat is filled in the MGM Grand Garden Arena. The atmosphere is exceptionally intense. These Filipino-Mexican crowds bring absolutely astonishing energy to a boxing night. We're ready for something great. Let's go to Michael Buffer to begin the pageantry. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. Your attention, please, audio, please. Ladies and gentlemen, 40 years ago, the entire sports universe was tuned in to Madison Square Garden, New York City. The event was known as the Battle of Champions. In the golden age of heavyweights, two champions, each with a claim to the title and undefeated records, rose to the top and faced each other that night. In one corner, Muhammad Ali. In the other corner, 100, pardon me, 206 pounds of chiseled ebony steel. The son of a South Carolina sharecropper who fought his way to an Olympic gold medal and then to the hot hop of the heavyweight division. On that night, only one man left the ring after 15 rounds. He was undisputed, the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. His name, Smokin' Joe Frazier. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission, HBO Sports, and Bob Arum's Top Rank Boxing. Please rise at this time as we toll a memorial count of 10 
and say farewell to beloved Joe Frazier. Rest in peace, champion. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. It had never been an easy road for me. I didn't expect anything to come easy. Joe Frazier was born a sharecropper's son in rural South Carolina and pursued a boxing career after moving north to Philadelphia. An Olympic gold medal winner in 1964, a world heavyweight champion by 1970, Smoke and Joe was known for the ferocious left hook he wielded like a sledgehammer. But the quiet Frazier was overshadowed by Muhammad Ali, who'd been stripped of his title after refusing to serve in the military. When Frazier and Ali finally met in 1971, it was dubbed the fight of the century, a clash between a current and former champion neither of whom had ever lost a fight. That night, in Madison Square Garden, Frazier won. He said, don't you know I'm God? I said, God, you're in the wrong place tonight. But Frazier was overmatched by a young George Foreman in 1973, and after he lost a rematch with Ali the following year, Joe Frazier seemed washed up. In 1975, Ali agreed to give Frazier a lucrative fight in the Philippines, thinking it would be an easy win. Instead, the two men fought one of the most brutal, exhausting battles in boxing history. I wasn't happy about he didn't it, want but he didn't I had to continue going on. Frazier's corner mercifully prevented him from going into the ring for the 15th round in Manila. But Joe was Joe to the end, pleading for one more chance to keep fighting. I love my job. Uh, I love being a warrior. I love being a champion. Rest in peace. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, three national anthems. First, here to sing the national anthem for the Philippines, YouTube sensational rising star, 11 years old. Please welcome Maria Aragon. Bayang magiliw, penas ng silanganan, alab ng puso sa dibdib mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, duyan ka ng magiting sa manlulupig. Di ka pa sisiil sa dagat at bundok, sa simoy at sa langit mong bughaw. May dilag ang tula at awit sa paglayang minamahal. Ang kislap ng watawat mo'y tugumpay na nagninigning. Ang bituin at araw niya kailan pa may di magdidilim. Lupa ng araw na. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here to sing the national anthem for Mexico, please welcome Grammy Award nominee, Mexican pop artist, Christian Castro. Mexico. 
mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridón, y retiemble en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiemble en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Siña patria, tus sienes de oliva, de la paz del arcángel divino, que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el dedo de Dios se escribió. Mas se osare un extraño enemigo, Profanar con tus plantas tu suelo Piensa, oh patria querida, que el cielo Un soldado en cada hijo te dio Un soldado en cada hijo te dio Mexicanos al grito de guerra El acero apresta y el bridón y retiemble en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiemble en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. ¡Viva México! ¡Vamos, Juanma! ¡Viva México! And now, ladies and gentlemen, with the Nellis Air Force Base Color Guard here in the ring, and with dedication to the men and women who serve in harm's way with the armed forces of the United States of America, here to sing the national anthem of the USA, please welcome season 10 American Idol star and recording artist, Thea McGill. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regulated the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there the tape from Manny Pacquiao against Juan Manuel Marquez. And of course, the six-year age advantage for Pacquiao is cited by many as critical. It's one of the reasons he's a heavy favorite to win the fight. A half-inch height advantage for Marquez. They are equal in arm length from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in a pound or two under the 144-pound agreed-upon catch weight limit. Neither felt compelled to go all the way to 144 tonight. Pacquiao weighs a few more pounds at 148, and Marquez has gone up to 150. Copy box numbers. And in the first two fights, the same pattern was observed in both fights. And that pattern is Pacquiao throws more and particularly throws more jabs. 
but lands at a lower percentage than Marquez, who landed more punches and landed more power punches in both of the two fights and landed at a higher connect percentage in both of the two fights. The most important statistic, however, knockdowns. In 24 rounds, Pacquiao was able to put Marquez on the canvas four times. Marquez never was able to get Pacquiao down. And that's the reason that Pacquiao has a draw and a one-point win in two fights coming into tonight. Highlights of the two fights. Their first fight seven years ago, May 8, 2004. And in the first round, Emmanuel Stewart, it appeared that Marquez was not ready, was not dialed in on Pacquiao's left-hand power and his speed. Yeah, he was not prepared for it because unlike most guys who throw their left hand just to land and make a contact, Manny Pacquiao punches all the way through his target, and he got hit with three great left hands, went down, and after he figured that out, he came back and fought a great fight. But he had a real tough first round. But after that first round, in the eyes of one judge, Marquez won 10 of the next 11, as he turned the fight around with tremendous right hand counter punching, seemed to have Pacquiao solved. They fought furiously to the finish. Pacquiao made a comeback later in the fight and landed some more power shots. But Marquez reached the final bell, thinking he had come all the way back from the three knockdowns to win the fight. Instead, it was called a draw, and technically incorrectly so, because Burke Clement's score of 113-113 was wrought partially by the fact that in the first round, despite the fact that Marquez went down three times, he gave him seven points. The other two judges both scored the first round correctly, 10-6 for Pacquiao. Yi Jutra loved the counter-punching of Marquez. John Stewart loved the aggression of Pacquiao. So they fought again three years later in, in uh, 08. And actually, it was four years later in 08. And the fight began pretty much the same way. And in round three, Pacquiao's left hand found the target again. That is what he has to look out for tonight, even. Seems like he gets hit mainly with the left hand, mostly, because Marquez keeps his right hand a little bit wide with his defensive way he fights, and Manny finds a gap to get inside of it. But beyond that, Manny Pacquiao has a rough time with Marquez, except for that, those left hand shots that he could get inside of Later in the fight, Marquez was cut by an accidental butt. Then Pacquiao was cut by a punch. Then Marquez was cut by a punch. Then they fought feverishly to the belt with blood on both of their faces. And when the final bell round, uh, rang, once again, the judges had an extremely difficult assignment on their hands. And this time, they met the challenge in very similar fashion to the scoring of the first fight. Wayne Ford liked Pacquiao's aggression. Jerry Roth liked Marquez's counterpunching. Tom Miller in the middle was the man who broke the draw. 114, 113 for Pacquiao. So the knockdown in the third round, a single point, the difference in the fight, the reason Pacquiao was able to beat Marquez in their second fight. Since those two fights, Manny Pacquiao has mounted one of the most amazing sustained runs in the history of the sport. He went up to lightweight and beat David Diaz. He went to welterweight and beat Oscar De La Hoya. He beat Ricky Hatton at junior welterweight. He beat Mikel Cotto at welterweight. He went to 154 pounds and beat Joshua Clotty. He easily beat the much bigger Antonio Margarito. He walked through Shane Mosley at welterweight. Every one of those fighters, a naturally larger man than Pacquiao, none of them anywhere close to giving him competition in the ring. And you know what, in addition to those being such big, famous, recognized and marquee names, he probably lost about four rounds total. He annihilated them. Meanwhile, Juan Manuel Marquez has had one slip up since the two fights with Pacquiao. That was the one time he decided to go up and wait to welterweight, fight, fight Floyd Mayweather at a catch weight. He was as though in quicksand in that fight, had no chance of keeping up with Mayweather and was annihilated over the course of 12 rounds. In addition, Mayweather knocked him down, so did the relatively ordinary Michael Katsidis. Obviously, to have a best chance to prove his point and win against Pacquiao tonight, Marquez must try to stay on his feet for the full 12 rounds. Their records are amazingly similar. Marquez's record is 53-5-1 with 39 knockouts. Pacquiao is 53-3-2 with 38 knockouts, virtually identical. Juan Manuel Marquez, in the second half of his career, finally emerged from under the big shadows cast by his more famous countryman, Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales. 
Max, did he simply outlast them, or did he get better? Well, he was a little younger and fresher than those guys. And truth be told, a little more scientific of a boxer, although Barrera developed later in his career. And you could argue, maybe, just a little better. And Emmanuel Stewart, about 10 years ago, you were training Prince Nassim Hamed, who has been a giant star in the featherweight division. <laughs> but you knew at the time about Marquez. This was the only fighter that I told Chris when I started training that I never wanted him to fight. And it's amazing to see him still fighting on this level, which is about 10 years later, and still a star. And he's fought some of the best fighters in the world, but he still hasn't became that big super superstar in Mexico, even though he's a star fighter. Like his great uh, counterpart before him, Julio Cesar Chavez is a great knockout with Mildred Taylor with two seconds left, beating Hector Macho and Rosario, two of the greatest Puerto Rican champions. He has not been able to do this. Tonight brings everything to him on his table. If he wins this tonight, he is a big, big star in so many different ways. Larry Merchant's great line in their first fight, Marquez is making the stand of his life because this is the fight of his life. That was the fight of his life then. This, in an even bigger way, is the fight of his life tonight. And now the crowd begins to chant for Pacquiao. And the Mexicans chant, Marquez, Marquez, Marquez. Over the years, the tradition between Filipinos and Mexicans has become enormously intense. And the competition exists not just between the fighters, but among their fans as well. And you know, Manny Pacquiao has beaten so many of the great Mexican fighters. So if, if, if Marquez could pull this off tonight, it would make him like a giant. Well, a long time ago, there was a fighter named Roger Mayweather who used to call himself the Mexican assassin. But nowadays, the real Mexican assassin is this man, Max. 15 wins, one loss, one draw against Mexican fighters. Oh, he's wiped out an entire generation of the greatest Mexican champions. Uh, lots on the line in this fight for Marquez as a result. But Pacquiao has such an aggressive, crowd-pleasing style. In a way, he's an honorary Mexican fighter. There's a lot of love among Mexican fight fans for Pacquiao because of the way he fights. Of course. Is this gamesmanship, Emmanuel? Is he making Marquez wait in the ring just a little bit? That's not normally a man of Pacquiao type thing, but yes, that's the only thing I can see. There seems to be no reason, particularly he's been in so many super fights here, the same as Marquez, that he would be running on a better schedule than this. But you, whatever the reason is, it's unusual. The most prominent fighter-trainer relationship in the sport now is that between Pacquiao and his guru, Freddie Roach. For his part, Roach said, there's no need for a new wrinkle against Marquez. The need is for great intensity, for Manny to realize the seriousness of the situation and to rise to the occasion once again. Pacquiao is one of the greatest fighters you will ever see. I don't care if you live to be 100. And he's still in something like his prime, maybe still in his prime. It's an event every time he fights.
One of the world's most joyfully comfortable public figures, to be sure. Fight fans, enjoy him while they can. Let's go back to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, we are about to turn the page to Chapter 3 in the trilogy of two future Hall of Fame fighters. If you love boxing, you're gonna love this. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Welterweight Championship of the World. Brought to you by Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, MP Promotions, and Marquez Boxing. Sponsored by Tecate, Cerveza con Caracter, AT&T. Get it faster with 4G, Rethink Possible, and Smart Communications of the Philippines. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Skip Avancino, Executive Director Keith Kaiser, and the World Boxing Organization President and Supervisor tonight at ringside, Francisco Paco Barcarcel. The three judges at ringside scoring this bout will be Robert Hoyle, Dave Moretti, and Glenn Trowbridge, and inside the ring, in charge of the action, referee Tony Weeks. And now, for the thousands in attendance here at the MGM Grand, and the millions watching around the world on HBO Pay-Per-View. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, standing with head trainer Nacho Berenstein, wearing black, official weight, 142 pounds. His professional record, 53 victories, including 39 knockouts, with five defeats and one draw. Tonight, he is the challenger. The three-time world champion, the current lightweight champion of the world, Damas y Caballeros de Ciudad de México, el gran campeón, Juan Manuel Pinamita. And fighting out of the red corner with head trainer Freddie Roach, wearing white and blue, officially weighing 143 pounds. His professional record, 53 victories, including 38 knockouts, with three defeats and two draws. From Sarangani Province, the fighting pride of the Philippines, the eight-time world champion, recognized as pound for pound the best in the world. The reigning, defending, WBO welterweight champion of the world, Manny Pacman Pacquiao. Okay, gentlemen, Caballero, you already received your instructions. Usted received your instructions. Okay, if it goes right here, it's okay. Anything below that's low. Aquí está bien, aquí no. If it goes right here, it's okay. Anything below that's low. Aquí está bien, aquí no. Keep everything above the waist. De los Santos para Lima. I want a good, clean fight. Y aquí no play Olympia. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Escúchame, cuídate. Listos? Let's go. Vámonos. Does Marquez, at 38 years old, have enough left to make a third great fight with Manny Pacquiao? Round one begins with Pacquiao all the way out to the center of the ring before the bell sounded. Southpaw up against a conventional fighter. But in their first two fights, their heads only came together once. Two very clean fighters. 
seldom has either been charged with a foul. Pacquiao starting behind his jab. Pattern of the first two fights, Pacquiao throws more jabs than Marquez. Marquez looks to counter with power shots. Manny is fighting very, very intelligent. Notice he's keeping his balance, doing a lot of fading before he punches to make sure that he doesn't get counter punched so easily. He looks very, very strong. It seems to be just a little bit faster with his coordination and his movement at this stage. Even though no one has landed a punch, he seems to be better balanced. Marquez tries the jab just a little bit short. Pacquiao's jabs have been short. He's more active. Some theorize the possibility that Pacquiao might throw a wrinkle into this by laying back a little bit in the early rounds and making Marquez lead so that he himself could find something to counter with power. Here's the first hard shot of the fight. A left hand straight up the middle on Marquez's chest. And now Pacquiao again reaches Marquez with the left, this time up top. Little red mark already on the nose of Juan Manuel Marquez. That came from the Pacquiao left hand. And that is what is going to be a signature punch in this fight here. And I'm looking at the way Marquez is standing. Man is going to try to drive a straight left hand right through the center. Freddie Roach said, very concertedly, this was Manny's best training camp ever. All I can say to that is, imagine that. He Two looks good. shots for Marquez. Manny looks very fast, very well coordinated. Very, very good balance. They both look ready. Pacquiao just missing over the top with the left hand. Marcus's his nose is on the right side, just inside the eye. These guys have fought 24 rounds, and right now there's a lot of respect between both of these guys. And Manny seems to be just a little bit faster, but I think a lot of it is respect, filling each other out a little bit. But I, I would notice that even when Marquez did let Manny mix, he didn't counterpunch. And you see Manny now doing the counterpunch. Absolutely now. right. He's the counterpuncher yeah. now, and he landed a right uppercut. Now he fires the left up the middle again. Marquez hasn't been able to tag him with anything good. A couple of body shots for Marquez there, but Pacquiao won the round, it appeared to me, with a couple of good left hand shots. High intensity round, even if there wasn't a lot of action. Don't throw in like that. Don't throw in like that. Very nice, very nice. Bring your hands back up to where they're supposed to be, Juan. Very good, very good round. You're going and you're attacking the body good. numbers in round one. Yeah. Marquez didn't really get going, only 7 to 32. Pacquiao only threw 38 punches, landed 11. A couple of them were good hard left-hand shots. It appeared that Manny was experimenting, particularly in the second half of the round, with laying back, trying to make Marquez lead, and passing himself in the role of counterpuncher. Crowd wants more action to go with all that intensity. Both fighters are still being tactical and relatively cautious. One change that's taken place since their first fight, the development of Manny Pacquiao's right hand. He was a searching left-hand puncher, double jab, left-hand, double jab, left-hand, over and over. Back in 04, there's way more variety in his game now. Oh, he's a very balanced out fighter now. I love his speed, his, his defense is good, his balance is phenomenal. He looks very strong, too. Well, that, that transformation happened before their second fight, largely, and Marquez still gave him all the problems in the world in the second fight.
Pacquiao leaned in. Marquez got in a body shot, just missed with a long right hand. Marquez jabbing to the body, trying to create some action here, trying to scare up something that he can counter for Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao's been very judicious, very selective, has landed when he wanted to. Marquez getting ready to take a couple more risks, or so it would appear. He has stepped forward about six inches, getting himself into tighter range with Pacquiao. Pacquiao knows while he has a guy in front of him who's his own, his own size or maybe even smaller, he's also his own skill level, and he hasn't faced that in a long time. Body shot by Marquez, and then he landed an uppercut at the end of the exchange. Marquez has did his homework on studying the left hand of Manny Pacquiao after two fights in 24 rounds. You see, very much aware of avoiding the straight left hand of Manny's more than anything else. And you saw him there trying to counter Oliver Manny's left hand with his right hand, something he did so successfully in the first fight between the two. Now Pacquiao lands a left hand, comes back with a body shot. Pacquiao blindingly fast on his feet. This is the thing I think that's more troublesome than anything. It's a tension out on the side from his punching pile. His rhythm, he's got that little jerky movie in and out tightening it. As the fight goes on, it wears the guy out mentally just trying to keep up with his body rhythm. Right hook by Pacquiao. Marquez came across with a right hand across the top. Put me outside. Hey, you are you walking into his right hand? Put that arm down for me, man. Just relax, put this feet. Very nice. Lively when you're boxing. But you can't you can't permit yourself any errors. You understand? The gloves. Clean out the gloves. Clean up the gloves. Sit those punches down. Second round, CompuBox numbers began to even up just a little bit. Pacquiao, 9 out of 42. Marquez, 8 out of 30. Marquez landing six power shots to only four for Pacquiao. Round three gets underway. Thought Marquez won the round. A far more tactical fight so far than was the case in either fight number one or fight number two, or at least, according to my memory, it seems that way. Harold Letterman gave the second round to Juan Manuel Marquez. A seesaw pattern, I win a round, you win a round, is another thing we saw in the first two fights. Left hand over the top for Pacquiao. in here in round three. Yeah, but, I, but Manny's speed just seemed to be a little bit faster than Marquez, and that's what's he, and in addition to him looking physically stronger, but his speed is just so much. Even though Marquez is doing good now, but still, he's having a problem trying to deal with the speed of Manny as he's coming in. Marquez landed a right hand down the chute. Pacquiao came back with a left hand up the middle. Manny Pacquiao knows he has to be defensively responsible against Marquez, who's such a good counterpuncher, and as a result, it's muted Pacquiao's offense. He's muted his own offense. Pacquiao making Marquez miss, but not firing back. Marquez fighting a conservative defensive fight here in round three. Another jab to the body. 
Trying to get Manny Pacquiao to bring that guard down just a tiny bit. These have been so far three of the quietest rounds these two have fought. Small amount of combustion there. Little body shot for Marquez. Left hand over the top for Pacquiao. Marquez sticks a straight right hand. There's a hard right hook by Pacquiao. Best punch of the fight so far. Marquez feels the need to answer. Now the action begins. Don't just stand there. Don't stand still. Why? Don't stand there. When he's throwing that left, don't stay ver, there. Voy, voy. Come on, I'm working. Coming. Levanta. Hey, no le des tanta agua, despacio. Jinky Pacquiao is increasingly comfortable at the big fights, able there to smile and make a motion toward the camera, but you can see the nerves underneath that countenance. She has never become quite accustomed to the notion of watching her husband fight. She tries it, she goes through it, but she's nervous the whole time. Copy box numbers in three, they both landed 10 punches. Pacquiao 10 out of three, 53. Marquez 10 out of 39. Harold, how do you have it through three? You know, Jim, I gotta tell you something. In two fights so far, Manny Pacquiao won both of them, both big controversies. And I'm starting to wonder whether that one-on-one -on -one Marquez style just impresses the judges enough to win a fight. He backs up, he does nothing flashy. He, you know what he does is very unusual. Judges like myself tend to go for the effective aggressor. I gave rounds one and three to Manny Pacquiao because of the fact that he's the effective aggressor and he looks better doing it. 29-28, two rounds to one, Pacquiao. Now we're seeing the kind of action we saw in the first two fights. I hit you, you come and try to hit me back. One of the reasons that we have seen flowing, sustained action from them in their first two fights. I think Pacquiao just convinced himself a little bit that he can impose his speed on Marquez. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing, a lot of speed. I mean, Marquez just looks so much slower than he does. And this is maybe the fastest I've saw Manny myself. And he's keeping good balance on it. I've seen him punch a lot and get out of position, but he's very, very conscientious of getting out of balance in this fight. So he's punching and getting back in position right away. Reaching left hook for Marquez. Made contact, but not solidly. Best punches of the fight have been a couple of Pacquiao left hands in the first round and a Pacquiao right hook in the third. Now Pacquiao begins to land solidly with a left and a right upstairs. Another left hand. Slight swelling above Juan Manuel Marquez's right eye, possibly from a Pacquiao left. Marquez goes to the body with his right. I was about to say a little while ago, one of the reasons that we often see free-flowing action from them is that Pacquiao's by nature an attacker, but he's also a great counterpuncher. Marquez is by nature a counterpuncher, but he's also a great attacker. Everything that happens generally gets answered and then answered back. Marquez must be careful when reaching for those low body shots that Pacquiao doesn't time him and counter upstairs. Now Manny yes. begins to exploit yeah. those yeah. angles. He yeah, goes by you on he, one he, side, he's and then his, comes back. He's shooting his left hand a lot of times, but not with the full knockout power, but shooting it almost like a fast jab just to change up his attack, and therefore Marquez can't really time the left hand as much as he did before. And you see the challenge for the 38-year-old Juan Manuel Marquez fighting at a weight class far above what he's accustomed to, trying to keep up with the speed of Pacquiao, who's far more accustomed to this weight. Good left hand by Pacquiao. Marquez lands a right in the third. Here we go. Here we go.
As those exchanges began to move their head. Okay. Right, he's coming back. You're going to win, Juan. Let him despair. Let me be focused. Jab. You hit the right low into the body. <laughs> Here you see what Marquez and, and, and Pacquiao both was concerned about getting counter punch. Anytime either one of them throw a punch and leave himself out of balance, boom. Beautiful right hand come back by Marquez right here. Good right hand shot. Combi box numbers in the fourth round. Pacquiao 15 out of 47. Marquez 12 out of 43. Pacquiao with a slight edge in power shots. On Harold Letterman's guard, Manny Pacquiao goes to three rounds to one. was blocked by Pacquiao, as were the two preceding. Pacquiao, a far more responsible defensive fighter than was the case eight years ago. Copy box numbers between rounds showed you that this fight is taking place at a slower pace than the second of their fights. Uppercut from Marquez. Pacquiao seemed momentarily not to be paying enough attention. Marquez landing easily from outside then. Now Pacquiao comes back, answering, firing his double jab left hand combination. Still the preferred combination for the Filipino star. Right hand over the top for Marquez. But this is what makes the type of fight that these guys are doing. When one guy gets hit, the other guy automatically comes back right away. Pacquiao landed a right hook and a left hand. Marquez comes back with a solid left up the middle. Pacquiao again wants to answer back. 20 seconds to go in the round. Most dominant round of the, of the fight so far, offered by Marquez. And he is loosening up and gathering confidence and starting to fight. But his right eye is also beginning to swell. Lively with your defense. Bring your defense up. Double up your defense. You won that round. All right, we're losing control. Manny, you've got to stop chasing this guy. You've got to start moving to your right. Here you see which is the best punch of the fight right here. Straight right hand, right on the chin from Marquez. Hit it straight between the gloves, right down the pipe. Manny Pacquiao's chin tested there by Juan Manuel Marquez. Remember the pattern of the first two fights? Marquez lands more power shots through five rounds here. Pacquiao, 30 of 83 on power shots. Marquez, 33 out of 91. The pattern begins to emerge again. Pacquiao looked up right before the bell for this round as if to say, looking to the heavens. 
Here we go again with this guy. Five rounds have gone by pretty quickly. Here's the sixth of a scheduled 12. Marquez was buoyed by winning the last round. His corner spirits were lifted. Good jab by Marquez. Sneaking it in across the top of Pacquiao's right hand. Judging by the chance, the crowd's about 50-50. But by nature, the Mexican fans are louder and more boisterous than the Filipino fans. Marquez blocking Pacquiao's left there. Body shot by Marquez, drives Pacquiao back. Pacquiao lands a little left inside, steps away at an angle. Marquez looked like a nine to one underdog to you guys. Not even close. Those odds were absurd. Pacquiao's been so mesmerizing some of his fans and followers have become irrational in terms of judging his quality compared to the guys he's fighting. There's a good right hand by Marquez, countering off the ropes. And there's a hard left by Pacquiao, and a good right hook, and another left. We're close to having full combustion here. All the burners are on. Let's see how high the fire builds. Hard right hand by Marquez, followed by another. Pacquiao with a right hook, Marquez with a left hook. We're picking up where we left off with the last two fights now. Absolutely right. These last two rounds have been round 13 and 14 of the, of the second fight. Both guys tried to see if they could do better than the first two fights, if they could outclass the other guy, and it seems like they've decided there's no way around this. We gotta duke it out. Absolutely. Two fighters who know each other very well. The inherent beauty of the trilogy. Marquez driving Pacquiao back with a body shot as the round comes to a close. Close round. Both fighters have their moments. Careful, he's got power, but you're boxing very well. Close your eyes. Here we see, similar to the last two fights, where Manny shoots shots, get out of position sometimes because he punches so hard, and boom, here comes Marquez right back, taking advantage of that. Copy box number showed that Pacquiao was more active in the round, throwing 46 punches and landing 15 of them. Marquez only threw 28. It was his low output for the fight. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, I've got it four rounds to two, 58, 56, Manny Pacquiao. I thought one man, one Marquez, one, definitely one round five, certainly one round two in my estimation. But other than that, it's the effective aggressiveness and the hard left hand of Manny Pacquiao. I like when he fights, you know, I like when he throws a punch and he steps to the side. That's impressive because it's ring generalship. Four rounds to two, Pacquiao. I could certainly see that. To tell you the truth, I don't think anyone won that first round. Nothing much happened. But the Nevada State Athletic Commission and most ring authorities now vigorously discourage even around. There's a perfect right hand shot by Marquez. Pacquiao getting his chin checked once again. Not that it was necessarily even, but it may not have been to Pacquiao either. Well, the difficulty of scoring fights between the two of them is bespoken by the divergent scores of both of the first two fights. One judge in the first fight, 115-10 for Marquez, another 115-10 for Pacquiao. In the second fight, the same thing happened with scores of 115-112. You 
You know, I don't know what the uh, punch output has been in the first two fights, but these guys are fighting much more respectful, uh, a lot more careful this fight than they did in the first two fights. So the punch output is, I think, down, but they're punching more for accuracy down. Each guy is trying to make sure he does and make a mistake and leave himself open to get counter punch. Shot by Marquez. Those punches score. Good left upstairs by Pacquiao. And a double right that knocks Marquez back. Marquez makes another stand in the center of the ring. There's that left hand body shot again. You wonder when Pacquiao's going to be able to counter over the top of that with a right. There's a right hand upstairs by Marquez. And again. His timing on that right hand is extraordinary. Yeah, he's, he's, he's really placing. Even though Daniel maybe went, I mean, but then I'm not spoken that to the crowd. The most important thing to me is just seeing how effective Marquez has been landing with those clean, well placed shots. There was an amazing piece of footwork by Pacquiao, who moved to three or four different places while Marquez was standing still. There's another amazing piece of footwork as he lands a shot and goes by Marquez to a place where but Marquez has taken his time There's to place the punches. There's the uppercut. Brilliantly thrown by Marquez again. Both men had their moments. Let's take a look at Manny Pacquiao's foot movement after he lands a punch. This is what I was talking about at the end of the last round. He lands a left and a right. Now watch him run away at an angle where Marquez can't possibly throw a shot. He did it three straight times at the end of the round. That's the thing that's underappreciated about Marquez. I mean, I mean that Manny is his footwork. Well, that, that Marquez waited till he stopped moving and nailed him with an uppercut. <laughs> I had a great pro football player as a guest at Pacquiao versus Cotto. Uh, Charles Tillman, who plays cornerback for the Chicago Bears, seeing his first live prize fight. I asked him, I said, what impresses you about Pacquiao? He said, easily, the footwork. I've never seen an athlete in any other sport who could get to so many places so fast. Meanwhile, we're dealing with another drawish fight so far. Our shots in seven. Pacquiao landed 16 out of 31. Marquez 11 out of 21. You saw between rounds that Manny Pacquiao is bleeding from the mouth. Bleeding from a cut apparently inside his lower lip. There's a, uh, an oddly shaped right hand shot by Pacquiao that landed. There's Marquez coming back with his conventional straight right cross over the top. Every time that Manny throws a punch, Marquez comes right back with a counter punch. Realize no one has competed with Pacquiao since the last time Marquez fought him. He is just smoked everyone he's faced. In order to compete with him, you must have great craft, you must have pretty good footwork, and you gotta have some speed. Marquez can't match Pacquiao for footwork or speed. He can match him for craft, for sure. But he takes his time, he's always in good balance position, and he takes advantage stop, of Manny stop. running in and, getting, and is over anxious and getting out of position. So he doesn't try to match him in those other areas. He just takes his time and places his punches very effective. Just like that. Cut by and a right hand upstairs. Pacquiao needs to answer back. Tries to fire a right hook. Marquez counters with a left. Pacquiao hasn't fought another great fighter who still had it since the last time he was in with Marquez. And obviously, the great Marquez still has it. At 38 years old and fighting at a weight which many felt would severely debilitate him in the fight. Juan Manuel Marquez is giving as good as he's getting from round to round and staying right there with Manny Pacquiao once again. <laughs> Left hand That's over the top again. by Manny. And Marquez comes right back with a shot every time after that. 
More and more, though, Pacquiao is ensuring himself by running to a side at an angle after he lands the left. Right hand by Marquez again. He times Pacquiao perfectly with that shot. Most memorable punches of this fight that have landed so far have been Marquez shots. Yes. You know, Manny creates a lot of excitement because his body rhythm. So I can easily see, in addition to those punching power, why judges get influenced by it because he's always moving, jiggling, creating excitement. And throws the left hand down the middle, which landed to end the round, and in a close round, may have left the right final impression on the judges. What a good, clean shot. He doesn't know what to do. That's why I'm asking you. Throw three punches. Three punches, and when you finish, block. Eh, Juan. Juan. En, en cuanto termina, redoblas tu When you finish, Sube las manos bring up your defense, double up your defense, and sharp when you go back. Está your hands up. De la cara, Juan. Eh, eh, now, quick, quick, quick. You do it for me. This fight is building an intensity from round to round. Power shots through eight. Pacquiao's landed 65 now. Marquez has landed 63. Marquez had a 13-11 power shot edge in round number eight. These rounds are close. It's another scoring challenge. Harold Letterman has it five rounds to three so far for Manny Pacquiao. Wouldn't be hard to imagine one of these judges having it five rounds to three the other way. Indeed, very possible. an entirely different judging panel from those who judged the first two fights between them. Pacquiao blocked both those shots with his gloves. That was on the back of the head, and Pacquiao shows referee Tony Weeks that it was on the back of the head. It shouldn't be seen as a scoring blow. by Marquez. Now Pacquiao blocks another shot with his gloves and steps up to look to answer back because Marquez had two good offensive moments. Hard right hand down the middle by Marquez. Hard left hand in return by Pacquiao. Pacquiao needs to find a way to land some combinations here. Marquez is landing more combinations than Manny does at this moment. Pacquiao starting to rely a little bit more on his right hook. This is with the left. They trade shots at close range. Pacquiao backed Marquez off. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop.
that's what we have to do. We have to knock this guy out. Let's go after him. Three, four punch combinations. And he doesn't know what to do. Don't go through the ropes. Don't go through the ropes, please. If he moves, attack his body. If he moves, attack his body. Don't let him go. Don't bring your hands up. Please don't bring your hands down. When you see these kind of exchanges right here going back and forth, it's like, who you judge won these exchanges or win these, that's who's going to win the fight. Because they're going back and forth, tit for tat. This one here was, I would have to give up to Manic Death simply because he looks so strong, so fresh, and it's nice little bears and footwork that he threw there in the I agree with you, Emmanuel. Yes. Marquez landed some signature shots, but Manny outworked them. Copy box numbers in nine, Pacquiao 17 out of 70, Marquez 17 out of 56. Now here's the big moment, Harold, how do you have it through nine? Okay, Jim, I've got an 87, 84, six rounds to three, Manny Pacquiao. And I want to answer Emmanuel's question, I want to tell you, when the punches are equal, Manny, when the punches are equal, you got to start looking at other stuff. You look at effective aggressiveness, you look at defense, you look at ring generalship. What I talked about, what Jim talked about early on, was Manny Pacquiao's ring generalship. He hits you and he steps to the side so that when you come back, he's not there. Aggressiveness, Manny Pacquiao is the aggressor by a mile. Defense, Marquez is swelling, Manny's not. Six to stop, three, stop, stop. Pacquiao. Once again, Harold Letterman's card is unofficial. He scored the first fight 115-110 for Pacquiao. He scored the second fight 115-112 for Pacquiao. If you were scouting judges, you would say, oh, Letterman prefers the Pacquiao style. But nevertheless, he's a very, very good scorer, and other judges would do well to emulate it. Meanwhile, there's combustion again between these two guys in the tent. Marquez backs Pacquiao off to the right hand and does it again. Pacquiao pointing to his head, saying, I think I got butted. There's blood on Pacquiao's face. I'm not certain whether it's his or Marquez's. I'm quite sure what it matters. Oh, for the days of 15 round fights. And it's funny right now, Marquez should be being more aggressive. He seems to have managed distracted right now because of the blood for a second. But Marquez is not taking it to him. He should take it to him a little bit more. Pacquiao's time. cut. Pacquiao's got a cut above his right eye. Pacquiao is trying to motion to the referee that the cut came from a butt. We'll see what the Nevada State Athletic Commission tells us between rounds. And he finished the second fight with blood on his face and the cut over his eye. So did Marquez. Right hand shot for Marquez. Marquez to the body, Pacquiao upstairs. Two punch combination for Pacquiao. A right and a left there. He missed with the left, he landed the right. Now he lands the left. Marquez comes back with the right. Manny Pacquiao had a big rally to finish the round. And it's a round that Marquez could have won easily, I think, if he'd have stepped it up about a minute sooner. Might have won it anyway, but Pacquiao might have bailed himself out with that rally at the end. There's the cut, and it's bad. Keep breath. Here we see a nice right hand from Marquez. But that's not what caused the cut. And here you see an exchange right here with head, but there's bam, the head button. And that's where the cut comes from. Nevada State Athletic Commission confirming between rounds that the cut came from the head butt. And you made the point that Marquez had a round on the table he could have won. He only threw 37 punches. And Manny Pacquiao threw 50. And partially as the result of that, Harold Letterman gives Pacquiao a key round, which on the Letterman card makes him uncatchable now, unless Marquez scores a knockout. 
I'd be surprised if at least one, if one of the judges has it tighter than Harold, maybe even for Marquez at this point. I wouldn't be shocked, no, would any, neither would anybody else, based on the scoring of the first two fights, based on the way they match up with each other. Body shot by Pacquiao. You wonder if Marquez, unaccustomed to his weight, is having a little bit more trouble getting from here to the finish line, maybe pacing himself a tiny bit. Yeah, Manning looks so strong, even though Marquez is meeting him almost, almost punch a punch. Manning looks physically so much stronger, much fresher, and much faster. Marquez is 38, Pacquiao's 32. Our right. interpreter, Jerry Olaya, makes clear that in Marquez's corner, Nacho Berestain is very confidently telling Marquez, you're winning, we're winning the fight. That could be influencing Marquez's choices in the ring. Hard right hand by Pacquiao as Marquez runs forward. Big left and a right by Marquez. I have it around closer than Harold does, and there was a round, the first I thought, that could have gone either way. Pacquiao needs to answer back. Well, Harold has Pacquiao up by four rounds, so if you take two away, that makes it an even fight. Again, this is highly open to interpretation and could be scored differently by different judges. And again, Nacho Berestain, according to our interpreter, Jerry Olaya, is confidently telling Marquez, you're winning the fight. And he's fighting that way also. It's a big difference between doing much better than what the crowd or the public expected than actually winning on the scorecards. Pacquiao landed his right hook, got in another right hook, but Marquez tagged him with a left on the forehead. Pacquiao's cut has not been reopened in this round. Marquez also knows that Pacquiao in exchanges is extremely dangerous because of the hand speed he found out in their first two fights. And so in a way, he has to take what Pacquiao gives him, and Pacquiao's being more cautious than in their first two fights. All right, right hand by Marquez. Pacquiao tries to answer back with the left. Closing seconds of the round. Probably a Marquez round. We've got three round. minutes to go. You had everything. Just be careful that he doesn't catch you. Careful he doesn't catch you with one punch and you're down. Because then everything will be drawn. But you're winning. Breathe. Explode, Juan. Explode. Use your combination. Speed. The fight is yours. Throw the combination. Do you hear? Lively, lively. Guys, Marquez's corner thinks he's winning. Freddie Roach wants to see Pacquiao put this guy on his ass. And the crowd seems to think Marquez is winning. 12th round of a scheduled 12. Harold Letterman saw Marquez coming with a win in the 11th round, getting to within three points on the Letterman scorecard. We've emphasized over and over, official scores may conceivably be closer than that. If Berestein is this confident that Marquez is winning the fight, perhaps he hasn't observed over the last 10 years the powerful tendency of judges to favor the puncher who throws the most punches. Volume punching is the single biggest factor in the sport in winning fights on the scorecards. Incidentally, 12th round knockouts are rare. Both fighters have only one in their career. So chances are we're headed to the finish line again. Marquez is very conservative here in the final round of a close fight. Obviously, he believes what Berestein has told him. Pacquiao blocked 
the second right hand. The first one tasted and, 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 a, and a close fight like this, you never stop, tell stop, your guy stop. that he's winning. I mean, I, I don't care, regardless of what he's doing, maybe better than anyone expected, and maybe there is a little blood on Pacquiao's face, but, I mean, he's never dominated Pacquiao in this fight still. Ready he's hit, he's got it in didn't tell Pacquiao he's winning. He told Pacquiao stop, 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 to go stop, stop, out no, 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 and no. fight. Sometime during the later rounds in the Thriller in Manila, Muhammad Ali told Joe Frazier, they told me you were finished, Joe. And Frazier told Ali, they lied to you, champ. They lied. Anyone who told Pacquiao Marquez was finished, they obviously lied. lied. Marquez is trying to time Manny coming in and then counter punches. So all he's waiting on him to come in and mess with the straight left. The round is on the table. The fighter who's most active in the last minute can win it. Pacquiao's mouthpiece oh, pops out of his mouth, Get over and there's no action, so Tony Weeks will call timeout and give Manny a chance to put it back in. That's very unusual, especially a veteran fighter like him to have his mouthpiece come out in that way. How did that even happen? Very Jesus. unusual. Come on, it's come on, come on. Right out of his mouth. Time in, let's go. But the facial expression of Manny is very, very frustrated and desperate at this stage. But he don't know what to do because every time he runs in and throws a punch, Marquez comes right back and counters him. That's what's called counterpunching. And a potential hundred million dollar payday against Floyd Mayweather, potentially in May, hangs in the balance here. Marquez has backed off in the 12th round. Pacquiao only needs to throw another combination here at the end, probably to seal this round. This was a tremendous tactical error, I think, by Juan Manuel Marquez, who finally runs the puck out at the end, but never really let his hands go in that round. Oh boy, here we go again. Oh boy. We talked about Marquez fighting cautiously. Pacquiao didn't exactly throw caution to the wind, aware of the skills of Marquez after now 36 rounds with him. All the pressure now falls on three sets of shoulders. Three judges who have to make this critical decision. If you're looking for a definitive punch on which to score the 12th round, at the end of the round, that happened. That one left hand could prove decisive in the fight. Harold Hudge to score it through 12. The fight, Jim, 116, 112, eight rounds to four, Manny Pacquiao, you were right. He was, Manny Pacquiao came out, he fought the 12th round. You had got to fight the 12th round in a fight that you think is real close like that. I thought Manny Pacquiao had that four range of eight, nine, and 10. That helped him seal the win. I think Manny Pacquiao's going to win it. A clean punching and that effective aggressiveness. Harold, take us through Robert Hoyle, Dave Moretti, and Glenn Trowbridge. These Will are the do. judges. Okay, start with Robert Hoyle. Very, very good up-and-coming judge. He's retired from the military. Uh, you know, this is a guy that scores him well constantly. I have the utmost confidence in him. Dave Moretti will forever, forever be remembered scoring seven rounds to five, Sugar Ray Leonard over Marvin Hagler, which is exactly what I had. Brett Trowbridge is another guy, steady judge. If you have to put him in a big fight, you put him in because you know he won't blow it. Then, uh, he's a very good judge, Brett Trowbridge. So three Nevada guys, three, three good judges. It's nervous time now. For Jinky Pacquiao. For Manny Pacquiao. For one, Manuel Marquez. Mutual respect of the highest order. Michael Buffer holds the answer in his hands. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand, we go to the scorecards after 12 World Championship rounds. Robert Hoyle scores the bout. 
114, 114 even. Dave Moretti scores it 115, 113. Glenn Trowbridge, 116 to 112. To the winner by majority decision. And still, WBO welterweight champion of the world, the fighting bride of the Philippines. Manny Pacman Pacquiao. Well, given what Nacho Beristein was telling Juan Manuel Marquez in the corner, I guess we're going to hear a, a protest or a dispute from the Marquez corner. I guess we're going to hear them telling us that they feel they won the fight, but at the end of the day, uh, Emmanuel Stewart, I personally believe this feels like the right decision. Well, it could have went either way, it wouldn't have been I mean, in some way, Marquez won the crowd because he did better than the underdogs, and he had blood coming from Manny's face. But still, when you go to the scorecards, it could have been either way. I, I had no opinion, it was just close. Well, Dave Moretti and Robert Hoyle both gave the 12th round to Pacquiao, and that was critical on Moretti's 115-113 yep. scorecard. And it was critical on Hoyle's scorecard because it pulled Pacquiao into a draw in the fight. Glenn Trowbridge gave the 10th round or the 12th round to Marquez, but he already had Pacquiao five points up at that point. But I, I think a lot of it. I thought that Marquez should have stretched out a little bit more. I thought he played it too safe. He was laying back as if he was winning the fight because of the instruction from his corner. Big, big mistake. I don't think there's any question about it that Marquez played it too conservatively down the stretch of the fight. He averaged only 37 to 38 punches per round. He needed to throw more than that to stay with Manny Pacquiao. Here are the numbers, and once again, they're going to follow something like the profile of the first two fights, where Marquez lands with greater accuracy. But Pacquiao throws more punches. Really, that's probably the biggest difference. Manny threw 142 more punches than Marquez and landed 38 more. Not all of them were big power shots, but when you're the more active fighter and you do a good job of ring generalship, as Harold pointed out, you're likely to be the one the judges favor. This time, for the first time in the trilogy, he lands more power punches. It felt as though Marquez could have reversed that if he'd simply opened up yeah. and let his hands go more. And here's a look at punch zone, which tells us where all the punches landed. And these are the punches that landed on Pacquiao. And you see the 33 body shots that Marquez got in with the left hand. He may think that the judges didn't give him enough credit for that. Pacquiao only threw and landed 17 body shots mm. in the fight. But the left hands and right hands upstairs were enough to win the fight for Manny Pacquiao. Marquez is apparently leaving the ring not happy, not sticking around to do post-fight interviews. And so we will talk to the winner, Manny Pacquiao. Here's Max Kellerman. And we're gonna see if we can't get Marquez back in the ring, Jim, to talk. Champ, congratulations. What are your feelings about this fight right now? Obviously, the... So Max Kellerman is having an audio problem in the ring. Therefore, this interview has not yet begun. And we're going to get Max a new uh, microphone in the ring. Meanwhile, we'll uh, keep it going from down here. The crowd response here is by no means unanimous, but certainly it's raucous and loud, particularly on the part of the Mexican fans who believe that Marquez has been jobbed one more time. And now Max Kellerman, they tell me, is ready. So let's go back to hear from Manny Pacquiao. Right, we'll see if this works. There you go. Manny, what are your feelings about this fight? You hear the crowd, they're not happy with the decision. What do you think? Well, the fans of Marcus, of course, they're not happy, but my fans, they're very happy because it's clearly I won the fight. You said coming into this fight, you wanted to leave no doubt. 
Do you think you did that this time? I, we have to accept that, you know, my opponent is not that easy. He's, he's a good fighter, but I do my best, and, and you know, it's very clear. It's, uh, when, I mean, I won the fight. What is it about Marquez that gives you so many problems? You have been steamrolling everybody else. What is it about him? The counter puncher, and, and the, you know, he's, uh, he's waiting for my punches, and then he, he didn't throw the punches. Having, would you consider fighting Marquez again at some point in your career? In the time, in the time, you know, uh, I'm a fighter. My job is to fight in the ring. It depends on my promoter's Barbaro. Manny, the fight the whole world wants to see, we talk about this every time, is Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. Mayweather said he wants to fight in May. What would you like to say to Floyd Mayweather? Well, uh, let's get it on and make the fight happen on May, May 5. And I mean, uh, let's give the people a good fight. Thanks, Jeff. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank all the fans who came here tonight and, you know, uh, from, other, from other places. So thank you. It's, you know, it's really good. Jim. All right, thank you very much. Max Kellerman's going to go now to the dressing room to see if he can possibly get some feedback from Juan Manuel Marquez. The crowd is continuing to respond to the decision in favor of Pacquiao. Uh, Emmanuel Stewart, in a situation like this, the star fighter is seen by the crowd, I think, to have gotten the benefit of the doubt. But at the end of the day, Pacquiao was more active, and I have to wonder why Marquez was so conservative in the late going in the fight. That was a big mistake. You know, and if anyone is to be blamed, it's his corner. I mean, you never, especially that type of a fight, you know, it's, 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 it was a close fight for anyone to feel that they was winning a fight that comfortable. He has only fought himself. And he could have stepped it up in quite a few occasions himself. But he didn't fight like he was trying to take a championship. You don't win a championship, you take it. And he didn't fight that way. And I, so I, I couldn't complain if I was in either corner. At this I don't think the outcry here is really justifiable. I agree. Uh, on the other hand, there was a widespread expectation among experts here tonight that with the age advantage that he brought into the fight at a weight that appeared to be a very debilitating factor for Marquez and a tremendous benefit to Pacquiao, that this was the night that Pacquiao was going to separate himself and make his point. And many, many ringside reporters picked Pacquiao to knock out a guy who had never in 59 fights been knocked out. How do we explain to fans how these styles conspire in such a way as to make it so difficult for Pacquiao to pull away from Juan Manuel Marquez? Well, first of all, the fight went exactly as I predicted. I always have said it was not going to be a knockout because both guys have good chins and both guys get strong at the end. But I, I, as far as uh, not making a definitive statement, I mean, it just it happens. I think the style of Marquez is always going to be a problem for him the same way Ali had problems with Kenny Norton and Joe Frazier. It's just a matter of styles. Marquez takes advantage, and he times Manny. He doesn't try to keep up with his speed, but he times him and counter punches every time Manny throws a punch and gets out of position. If they could fight to about 50 years old. It would be the similar type fight. So what happens here is the conspiracy of styles between the great attacker who goes forward and by doing so creates opportunities for the great counter puncher to even the scales. Yes, and when Marquez started getting aggressive, Manny started counter punching him tonight. So that's why it was a very technical game, but Marquez should have stepped it up. All right, Max Kellerman is still working back in the dressing room, and uh, our producers are telling me that we think we're moments away from getting a possible interview with Marquez. It'll be fascinating to see uh, what Juan Manuel and perhaps the trainer Nacho Berestein have to say. All right, all the speculation now goes to the possibility of Pacquiao Mayweather. Did Pacquiao enhance or diminish? All right, we'll get to that question later. Let's go to the dressing room now for Max Kellerman with Juan Manuel Marquez. Champ. Another very close fight. What did you think at the end? Yo creo que el segundo robo, el segundo robo de las tres peleas que hemos tenido, yo creo que este aún fue más claro. It's the second robbery of the two, fight, the two that we've had, and I think this one was even more clear than the first. In your corner, Nacho Bernstein, your trainer, was telling you that you were winning the fight, that you were up on the cards. Did that affect the way you fought towards the end of the fight? 
did you not fight as aggressively towards the end as you might have had you thought it was close? No, yo creo que esta esta pelea la ganamos claro, conectamos los mejores golpes, hicimos el mejor boxeo, hicimos todo. Eh, yo creo que él lo sabe. Otra vez la afición se vio como protestó y yo creo que otra vez volvimos a ganar. We won, we won with the clearer punches and obviously we just won again and obviously the, the audience protested as you saw and they saw us win too. We won again. Do you want another fight at some point with Manny Pacquiao? No sé, no sé, todavía voy a esperar, voy a decidir mi carrera. Tal vez me retiro, tal vez continúo, no sé. No sé, pero vamos a ver, a ver qué pasa. Voy a platicar con mi familia, con mi equipo y a ver qué, a ver qué pasa. Otra vez, yo creo que esto no puede ser. Echan a perder todo un tiempo de carrera, echan a perder un largo entrenamiento fuerte y yo creo que es difícil luchar contra cuatro peleadores o cuatro, cuatro personas en el ring. I don't know. It's a, it'll be difficult. It'll be difficult to decide to see what happens. Uh, maybe I retire. Maybe I won't. It'll be difficult. But it's difficult also to throw everything away, everything that we prepared for. And it's hard when you're fighting against a, a rival and you're fighting against the three judges also. Nacho Beristain is here. Nacho, knowing now that he wasn't up on the scorecards, would you have advised him differently if you could do it again? Hello. Me deja una sensación de tristeza ver que se pone en el antifaz las gentes aquí en, en, en las que yo siempre he confiado, en la Comisión de Vox de Las Vegas creo que es una de las más seguras, más limpias, pero ahora me doy cuenta que el ser humano comete errores, pero este no es un error, es un robo descarado. You know, they deceived me, and I've always confided in the commission here, I thought it was one of the best ones, but truthfully this has been a robbery, a robbery of the utmost. Juan Manuel, anything you want to tell your fans to close out the night? Otra vez, muchas gracias por el apoyo y gracias a toda la afición mexicana, los latinos que nos estuvieron apoyando en México, alrededor del mundo y ellos saben otra vez que ganamos. Y un fuerte abrazo. Thanks to the fans, to the Latinos, to the Mexicans. Thank you all around the world. They knew that we won. Thank you. And a hug to all. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Max Kellerman, Emmanuel Stewart. Uh, before I get to the subject of Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao and the possibility of that fight, Let's just make one thing clear. Nacho Beristein, 71 years old, been around a long time, has trained several great fighters, one of the most respected trainers in the sport. But you say it's a cardinal sin for a trainer in a fight of this kind to constantly yeah. tell his fighter late in the fight that he's winning. And especially this type of fight. It's a very close fight. And I mean, not wanting to say that, but you're looking at the business part of it, how big a Manny Pacquiao and a Floyd Mayweather fight is too. I mean, you may want to say that, but that's really in the back of your mind. So you say, we must win this very decisively. And I think it was a big, big mistake. And maybe he could have won the fight if he'd have stepped it up a little more. Possibly could have gotten knocked out. But that's the chance you take when you're fighting a big fight like this. Now, watching what he saw tonight and the frustration that Pacquiao experienced against Marquez's counterpunching skills, why in the world wouldn't Floyd Mayweather jump on this right now and say, I'll fight him any minute you want me to, I'm gonna counterpunch him to death? Well, I think that's what Floyd may do, I hope he will. Because it's a fight that I've always thought that Floyd would win, but I think Floyd has still some doubts in his mind, but whether whatever the thoughts that he may have related to some kind of extra advantage that Manny may have of any way, I think he's convinced now that he can fight and win it. All right, coming up December 3 in Madison Square Garden, HBO pay-per-view grudge match. Miguel Cotto versus Antonio Margarito. Let's take a look. A lot of the interest in this fight is because of the first fight. It was a classic slugfest. And there was controversy later. It's widely known in the boxing community. People whisper and talk and say publicly, Miguel Cotto doesn't want to make any excuses. Privately, he's furious because he believes that Antonio Margarito used illegal raps against him in their fight. Can you address that? Can I say something? Can I bring a picture? With all your experience in boxing, what the only thing you can have on your knuckles? Just guys, right? Prende. Prende so. How? Their hand grabs right after my fight. 
How is she broken there? <clears throat> just gas. The gas, the gas doesn't get break. Pero... ¿Eh? Te la agrando y te la pongo más grande, mira. No hay, no, no hay nada, no hay nada. Y, y si... O sea, entonces, ¿por qué? ¿Qué es lo que quieres? ¿No pelear o qué? Porque no, 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 pelea. Yo, no hay nada. No, 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 está yo está limpio, pelea. por eso. Lo único, lo único es que yo he cargado mi derrota como un hombre. No, no te preocupes por eso. Mira. Así lo tienes que sostener. Sí, yo mira, te gané no, bien. Mira. Yo te gané bien. Por, ¿Eso no está roto ahí? El mira vendaje, los vendajes cuando vendaje se lo simplemente llevaron. Gasa. Mira los vendajes cuando se lo llevaron. El vendaje simplemente gasa. Y no la hay gasa, nada, la no gasa nada y no va a haber nada. Rompió. Simplemente soy limpio. Ok, aquí están los vendajes. Ok, ¿dónde está? No está roto. El, ¿Dónde está roto? Ok. El rojo. Sí. Lo, Tú estás diciendo lo roto. Lo roto okay. lo repararon. No, el, ¿cómo el van a blanco, reparar? No. El blanco, el blanco jamás va por encima del rojo. Lo que sea, uh -huh. lo que sea. Necesitas fuerza para vencer. Si sí, la tengo. Uh -huh. Entonces... ¿Cuál es el problema? Ninguno. Entonces, Simple, entonces simplemente... ¿qué, qué ¿Estás alegando entonces? No, estoy alegando lo que es la fuerza. Por eso. Uh -huh. Te gané. Sí, y eso yo fue, lo voy a volver a hacer. Y, he cargado, y así tú me vendes, quien me vende, te vuelvo a ganar. Uh -huh. ¿Tú crees? Y, y así es, uh -huh. así yo creo. Uh -huh. Así, así como lo oye yo creo. Quedan 10 semanas para demostrarlo. Exactamente, entonces demuestra ahí para qué estás no, hablando. Así, así será, ahí. así será. Entonces, así será. Entonces, demuéstrala ahí, no hables. Así va a ser. Espero verlo uh -huh. y sentirlo. Uh -huh. Jamás. Uh -huh. Antonio, in the Pacquiao fight, you may not feel that you had anything to prove, but you proved something to me in that fight, that you weren't just a fraud, that a lot of the reasons that the fans liked you were real. You went the distance with Pacquiao with a broken orbital bone and, and didn't stop fighting. Miguel, what do you think about the performance against Pacquiao? Stupid. This is stupid because if you, if you know I have a broken bone, what I have to prove, my health, is the most important thing in my life. What do you think about that? Miguel says it's stupid to risk your eye in a fight like that against Pacquiao. Because to me, it seems that you're willing to die to win a fight. Am I wrong? Am I right? Así es, así es, yo estoy dispuesto a morirme, yo lo, yo lo, yo lo he dicho, a mí que me bajan en camilla arriba del ring. Uh, los nocauts, los, los nocauts llegan, los nocauts llegan. Uh, hay una pelea muy parecida, Chávez con Taylor, Chávez iba perdiendo la pelea y lo agarró con un golpe y lo noqueó. Es por eso que yo le tengo fe a mi, a mi, a mi golpeo y sé que puedo terminar con un solo golpe. Why do you smile when you hear him say that? You want to die in a ring? For what? I have four kids, beautiful family. It's just my job. That's why I smile. That makes sense to me. That's a reasonable position to take. But in boxing, in those kind of fights, like the classic fight that you two had, when it comes down to it, 10th, 11th rounds, a very, very tough fight. Even if it's stupid, he's willing to die to win the fight. Yeah, it's up to him. Why I'm going to expose my life, my health, for what? For the fans, for the people, and my health, my kids, my family. He's going to take care of them. No one, just me. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't get, let it get that close. A, a normal person wouldn't. But he's not a normal person in this way. That's one of the reasons that a lot of fans like watching him fight. It's up to him. He made the decision he wants. I made my own. Is there anything you want to say to Miguel? No tengo que decirle nada. Él sabe que se tiene que preparar bien para esta segunda pelea. Anything you want to say to Tony? Él sabe que siempre estuvo preparado. Y... Así será para esta segunda batalla. Si siempre, si siempre estuve preparado, pues la primera vez estuviste bien preparado también y, y te gané y esta vez lo voy a volver a hacer. Veremos. A ver. Veremos. Exactamente. El 3 de diciembre. Así es. Oh, I'm so glad I'm calling this fight. So, do you like it? 
That was just part of the whole face-off Max Kellerman shot with both men. You can see the complete 12-minute version on HBO beginning tomorrow morning at 9.15 a.m. and many more times through the coming weeks. And so after all the bad blood, all the accusations, the pay-per-view matchup is set for December 3, live from Madison Square Garden, Cotto Margarito 2. You don't want to miss it. Leading up to the fight, 24-7 returns with a special two-part edition. Go behind the scenes as Miguel Cotto and Antonio Margarito discuss their first fight while preparing for their long-awaited rematch. The initial episode premieres November 19, before and after live boxing. That same night, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. defends his slice of the middleweight title against Peter Manfredo. It'll be coming to you from Houston, Texas, live on Boxing After Dark. And we mentioned earlier, the passing of boxing great Joe Frazier. For more on the man and his legendary rivalry with Muhammad Ali, tune into HBO tomorrow at 5.30 for a replay of the documentary Thrilla in Manila. Coming in January, on Freddie Roach, six episodes of director Peter Berg's intensely personal look at the man who five times has been named trainer of the year against the backdrop of Parkinson's disease. Hot Gal versus Marquez has been brought to you by MGM Grand, the city of entertainment in Las Vegas. Cerveza Tecate, Con Caracter. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by HBO. You can get exclusive updates from HBO Boxing's Facebook and Twitter profiles, and as always, at HBO.com, the online home of HBO Boxing. And now for our entire crew, I'm Jim Lampley, saying so long from Las Vegas, Nevada.